You just got He packed. needs some milk. What's going on, guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Tuesday. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great week so far. Having a look at Bitcoin today, Bitcoin is down 0.25%. Now, we had kind of a crazy morning this morning. You can see over here, we actually tried to break out. We wicked all the way up to about $8,867. We got rejected, and we dumped all the way down to 8560 And then we instantly wicked back up, and we are back at 8000 700. So what is this telling us for Bitcoin? Is Bitcoin losing its steam? Do the bulls not have the momentum that they used to have? Well, I do want to talk about that. Also, one of the things that we do tend to discuss is the lack of volume. You can see right here, volume is sitting at around 245 million, very, very low. You know, we've seen this upwards of a billion, 2.4 billion during those massive pumps. So the question is, should we actually be paying attention to the spot volume as much? Because we have seen a surge in derivatives and future type products. And we've seen backed putting in basically record-breaking daily volume, you know, every other day now. So I want to talk about that. And I also do have a few bullish things coming out of the institutions. I'll put that at the end of the video. So today is going to be a rapid fire video, super quick. We're going to talk about short-term price action, long-term, what's going on with the institutions and why I think we need to be paying attention to the futures volumes because they could hold the key for Bitcoin's next big move. And if that sounds good to you, you know what to do. Also, if you are not subscribed to the Crypto Zombie channel, we do this every single day. And of course, yesterday was the Ledger Nano S giveaway. But if you missed out, we do it every week. All you gotta do is drop a comment on any video, literally any video, and you are eligible. Now, let's give this a refresh and dive in and have a look. So Bitcoin dominance is sitting at around 66%. Scrolling down here, it's interesting. You see a lot of the top altcoins, or you know, coins and altcoins are in the red. And then we kind of move into a little bit more green. So you're seeing things like VeChain, Neo. Is it, a, is it a coincidence that these happen to be Chinese coins at the top? Komodo, Decred, Ontology, IOST, Bytecoin, Cryptarium, all doing quite well today. Interestingly enough, the Fear and Greed Index, I know we haven't spoken about this too much. It's been relatively, I mean, it's still in the fear, but it's, it's, it's very like mild fear. You could see, you know, 40, 53, 40, 39. So even though we've had a little bit of a sell-off, we haven't really had massive fear in the market. So, you know, how do I feel about that? Well, you know, usually when it's fearful is when you should be greedy when it's neutral, I don't know. That's what we're going to talk about. Diving in, having a look over here, I kind of spoke about the volume. This is what we're going to talk about today. Stick around for this. We're going to make today's video super quick, rapid fire, so you guys get the most value out of it. And currently, longs and shorts are relatively split down the middle, a little bit more towards the bearish side, uh, you know, shorts up almost 1%, roughly over longs, give or take. So, Let's talk about it. Well, same thing yesterday. Not much has changed. We're still being held down by this resistance. You can see right here, though, we did wick down to the support around 8,589. We did it yesterday. We tried again today, and both times it actually did provide the support. So this is actually good. Short term, Bitcoin is respecting this, right? Now, over here, having a look, this is what I wanted to talk about. Now, we were sitting below the 200 exponential moving average on the daily right here. And actually, if we zoom in, have a look at this, you'll see Bitcoin is actually sitting right there and trying to maintain above it, which is basically almost exactly at that $8,700 level. So we are hoping that this level does maintain. If it doesn't, well, then Bitcoin may actually push down to some of these lower levels. Now, just really simplifying the chart, just getting all the indicators out of the way, you could basically just see that we're putting in essentially a bull flag or a bull pennant, depending on how you wanna look at it, it doesn't really matter. Point is, we had a massive pump, and now we're having a bit of a, you know, descending pattern, right? And that is a traditional bull flag, bull pennant. And you can see we've respected the bottom one, two, three times and bounced up. Now, you know, we would be looking to potentially retest at least the top of this resistance, you know, maybe around 9,274 if we pump today, you know, if we were to pump tomorrow, could be around 9,233. But obviously to get really bullish, you need to break out of this all around, you know, and put in a little bit of a higher level, you know, break above some of these levels, maybe around 9,439, et cetera. But that's just what I wanted to point out. You can also actually take it all the way from the top of the wick if you want and draw a line all the way down. In that case, we're still in a bit of a bull 
pennant. In this case, we're actually very close to the bottom of the support. You can see we had support back here. And then currently that is where we wick down to. So, you know, if we do fall below the $8,570 level, then we may attempt to go down to the apex, which is actually sitting around 8,200. Now that's the bearish scenario. Okay. We could still dance around in here, you know, for two more days before having a potential breakout, having a look right here, you notice that we are sandwiched a little bit between this previous resistance right here and also the top of the resistance from this green you know wedge that we've been trapped in so having a look they basically put us at around the same area you know either way we're looking for that sort of 8,500 potential if we do continue to go downwards right now if we do have that breakout and the reason I was mentioning a potential breakout is because this is pretty much the third time Bitcoin has put this pattern in. It just keeps putting in the fractal smaller and smaller and smaller each time, right? We had the big massive triangle. Then we had the dump, accumulation, and pump. Then we had this little medium triangle. We had the dump, accumulation, and pump. And also notice that we also had a pump to resistance and a dump and then a final breakout to resistance. Well, right here, we've had the pump to resistance right here, you could see. Then we dumped again. So the question is, are we now looking for that next pump. Well, according to Rampage Thrillmex, you can see that he's basically broken it down into these little sections and Bitcoin looks like it's gearing up for a possible multi-quarter bull run to 50K by July 2020. Now, I had actually mentioned I thought Bitcoin could hit 55,000, 55, but that was by the end of the year. Like I was talking about maybe December. He's saying 50,000 potentially by July of 2020. Now, Having a look right now, the reason why where we're sitting is pretty key is if you can actually see right here above me, if you look at where the VPVR is, right where we're sitting is really a very interesting point because if we were to break above this, we don't really have much trading going on here and the next spot that we would actually hit is basically around that 9.1K level. So if Bitcoin does actually break out and you know has like a decent you know pop, there's a good chance that we might just slice through everything and go right back to 9.1K where then we'd be hitting some, well, resistance again, right? But here's something that I wanted to point out that's actually pretty damn bullish, and that's the fact that we are looking for a golden cross, okay? Having a look at this 50 and 100 moving average right here. Now, you can see right here, we had the uh, obviously the 50 cross below, so that was a death cross, right? And clearly, we saw what happened. Now, currently, we look like we may be potentially putting in a golden cross. And let me just go back here and show you. The last time we put in a golden cross right here was literally, and this is on the weekly, keep in mind, okay? If I said daily, my mistake. I meant to say weekly. Um, so weekly, essentially right here on the week of May 16th, you can see we put in the cross, and literally the next week, we had, look at this pump that we had from bottom to top, from from the bottom to the wick, a 78.62%. So the question is, if we do put in another uh, golden cross on the weekly, which looks like it probably is going to happen either next week or maybe the week after, then that could signal that Bitcoin is about to begin its next massive cycle. And then in that case, well, maybe we will have a $50,000 Bitcoin by July. That would be pretty crazy, but anything is possible in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency land. Now, I do want to give a shout out to Philb Philb because he also had mentioned the fact that these this Golden Cross is going to happen, and I wanted to sort of revisit this. Now, he came out with this quite some time ago. In fact, you could see this chart. Uh, actually, the last candle that's on here is from July 22nd of this year, but here's here's like the really cool part. Are you ready? So keep your eyes on this right here. So I'm going to hit play. Look at how damn accurate this guy's been. Look at this. Wow. I mean, granted, we didn't hit some of the lows the way that he thought we were going to, but I mean, he's basically saying that for a low, he was predicting, you know, around a 7.8K Bitcoin currently where we are right now. And obviously Bitcoin is, well, sitting a lot higher than that. And you could see basically from this point, as long as he's saying that Bitcoin maintains the beginning of this parabolic advance right here, uh, we should be good. And as long as we don't fall below that level, which, you know, currently right now would actually be around 7,000, uh, if we were to fall straight down, we would still technically be in bullish territory as long as we don't break this, okay? So I just wanted to point that out. And, you know, something else I wanted to mention was people saying, oh, you know, we fell below this up, you know, we fell below this trend, you know, this is bad. But guys, every time Bitcoin starts to put in that new parabolic advance, it does dip below it each time. I just want to point that out. Like you can see right here, we had the first one and then we fell below it. And then the next one is not as steep. We put this in and then it, you know, gets a little bit uh, lower. And then this one goes in and it gets a little bit lower. So now we have another one that we're putting in as well. Okay. So yes, Bitcoin does eventually fall below each 
you know, original advance because or else we'd literally just be going straight up, which we know that's completely impossible. No chart does that. And the, uh, you know, the last thing I wanted to end on essentially for my altcoin friends out there is yes, I do think that the altcoins are actually starting to have some decent accumulation. I do think they may have had a bottom right here and you can see they broke out of the descending wedge and they have been continuing upwards quite nicely. So, um, Basically, if you are looking to accumulate altcoins, not financial advice, I've actually started diversifying into some altcoins a little bit. Small percentage of my portfolio, nothing major, but I do think that if we are getting closer to the, you know, altcoins taking off or, or having a little bit of a mini rally, I, I would like to sort of be building somewhat of a position right now. But like I said, I'm not going heavy. Uh, I think my altcoins are around, I think it's like 7% of my portfolio right now. But I just wanted to kind of point that out as well. So if you guys are obviously looking to trade this over on Bybit, um, actually Bybit has a competition right now. I almost forgot to mention it. I probably should have said it in the beginning, but essentially you can see right here, they have this thing. It's um, right here, it's a BTC brawl, right? So basically they have up to 100 BTC in prizes, you get 20% off, and they also give you a sign up bonus if you wanna join this trading competition as well. You can see right here, I actually jotted down, so essentially it's 0 0.05 and you would get uh, $30 if you deposit 0.2 two, you get $80. And then if you want to join the competition, you'll get another $50. So the reason that I'm actually mentioning this to you is not so much about joining the competition. Um, I actually do feel kind of weird about competitions, you know, because it kind of encourages you to trade. And, and, and honestly, not every day is a great day for trading. You know, you don't want to be trading in the middle of like muddiness, right? You want to wait for good setups. But if you are interested, um, you know, they do have obviously you know, you can get some free money with the deposit. And also just to let you know, if you registered and you haven't deposited yet, you are still eligible. And just to let you guys know, if you do, I, if you want, I do have a link below. Um, you can use it, doesn't cost you anything extra. And if you're interested, I do have a tutorial popping up above, but I just wanted to mention that. Um, they do have teams and stuff. I'm not, I don't have a team um, just because I feel kind of weird about promoting a trading competition, you know, where what if it's not a good day to trade, you know, but take it with a grain of salt, not financial advice. You know, if you guys want, they do, they are giving extra money away for deposits. So I felt like I should mention that. But getting back on topic and talking about the important subject of today's video is this volume, which is sitting lower than $250 million over here on the real 10 for Bitcoin. But I wanted to point out what Charles Edwards had mentioned, and that was Bitcoin volume is actually massive. He says, guess what? Things are not as they may seem. Shrinking spot market volume has been more than compensated for. Futures have swallowed the spot market. Bitcoin 90 day volume was recently 40% more than the 2017. 2018 peak, this has powerful implications. This literally means that there is way more volume than we had at the all-time high. We're just not seeing it on spot. In fact, hopping over here, having a look at backed, you see backed volume is up to 1,114, you know, Bitcoin for today alone. And if you want something that's really going to blow your mind, hop over here, have a look at this. So there, the five-day average volume for the CME futures is actually... 3,333 contracts, but here is the kicker. Each contract is actually worth five Bitcoin. So we actually have to take that number and multiply it by five. And if that's not enough to blow your mind, why don't we go back to our good old buddy, Bybit, and actually just have a look right here. You can actually see if we look up here, the 24 hour turnover is actually 72,000 Bitcoin. So if we just copy this number right here, Okay, and then we go over to Google. I'll give this a quick refresh so it's as live as possible, all right? And we actually put this number in here. Look at that. So that is actually, I can't even count this number right now. Let's see, $627,287,565 worth of volume, and that's only on Bybit. Okay, so the volume is definitely on the derivatives exchanges, it's on the CME futures, it's on things like backed, and the spot volumes have taken a hit, but that does not mean that traders and institutions are not interested in Bitcoin. It just simply means that the volume is coming from somewhere else. So I just wanted to point that out moving forward. Also, not to mention, look, crypto software firm AlphaPoint is bringing margin trading to their clients as well. Another product, you know, coming out in the derivative futures world. And also not to mention, 
You have former head of Circle Trade and over-the-counter trade desk of cryptocurrency firm Circle has jointly set up a new proprietary trading firm called CMS Holdings. Their new firm, CMS Holdings, is reportedly looking to pool more than $10 million for business. The firm's plan is to put 30% of the money into highly liquid cryptos like Bitcoin and Ether and then 40 to 50% into less frequently traded coins, probably some top altcoins and things of that nature. And, you know, obviously, um, well, this is a side note. I just want to point this out actually real quick. Basically, it looks like Binance has announced a limited edition HTC Exodus smartphone that will have built-in Binance chain and Binance DEX support. It's kind of side note, but essentially, I do want to just end on probably the biggest news right now. And this is where I'm going to end today's video. And that's Bact has announced that it has launched its custody feature for its entire client base following regulatory approval. You can see they finally received the go ahead from the New York Department of Financial Services. And as someone from New York, I can tell you those guys are definitely not playing around. And now they can offer custody services to any institution. So, why is this good? Well, previously, the option was only available to those that were trading Bitcoin futures. So commenting on the release back described the custody tool as the critical link in the institutional adoption of Bitcoin. So for all of you that are getting super bearish right now, is it possible to hit some of these lower levels? Absolutely. On the macro trend, we are still doing just fine. On the monthly, we're looking just fine. As long as we don't fall below the current parabolic advance, which is Pretty much to be expected before the halving, we always put in this sort of sideways movement. Well, then, you know, essentially, I would say we're perfectly fine right now, and I wouldn't really freak out or have much to worry about. Yeah, look, in fact, we're trying to break this resistance currently right now. So that being said, guys, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Like I said, if you guys are interested in checking out that, uh, you know, Bybit thing, you can. I, um... Obviously, I do have a link below. You guys could use it. It does support the channel. I'm not too sure 100% if I'm actually going to be participating as far as like a team leader. Like I said, um, I do love Bybit, but I just feel kind of weird, uh, you know, being like a team captain or something like that, which is basically like promoting you guys to like trade all day. Be safe out there, man. If you don't feel comfortable with trading, don't trade. You know what I'm saying? But definitely check it out. I will drop the link below and, you know, video. You can check that out. And that's it for me today, guys. So thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Thank you so much for all of your support. You guys are the reason that I do this every single day.